Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Coffee and Crafts. Two seconds before we go live, my iPad decides, I think Facebook's updating, I don't know. So I've got my phone. So all of a sudden I'm like, oh no. Um, so I have no idea what's happening over here. So I gotta watch over here on this little screen. But good morning and welcome. It is kind of humid here today in Massachusetts. So we got the pigtail going. Um, so today we're gonna make a card. Where'd I put it? Where'd I put it? Hello. We are going to make this adorable little bear card with the um, a little wild set. So we're going to do that in a minute. So let's we'll give people a few seconds to come on and say hi. So let's just go over a few things that are going on that just happened with Stampin' Up. So unfortunately, or you know, good news, bad news sort of thing. The Daisy Punch is back on uh, unorderable again. The thing has been so amazingly popular. I guess it is the most popular stamp set in over five years. Um, so it is back on not or orderable status. So it will be, they assume or anticipate it to be back the beginning of, April, uh, beginning of August, April, Ooh, August. So a couple weeks. I know, I know a bunch of people I saw rushed to get it, um, last night. So hopefully, that's updating. Um, hopefully, you, if you've got it already, if not, I'm sorry. Though someone asked me, and I didn't realize, I, I didn't know the answer, and I thought about it more, was uh, what was, if it's the most popular punch in the past five years, what would be the next most popular? And they probably didn't do it that way. Um, probably they just look at a five-year window to make a prediction of how many to buy and what would sold. And what was in that window, it... Um, way beats that number. So there's probably nothing that was five years ago was so popular. It was just they look at a five-year window to make a prediction. Um, so it is very popular and hopefully it should be back August. I know they're waiting for it in order to come in. Also, exciting news. So coming in August is a new stamp set and this stamp set is going to be in the um, holiday catalog, but you get to order it in advance in August. And I... Oops, let me switch things around here. I just, let's do, oops, where am I going? Hold on, hold on. Oh, there we go. So I just got my hands on it. And so here is a quick look at the stamp set and die. This is the stamp set that is part of the promo if you join Stampin' Up! this week, um, or this month. So you get this stamp set. And it's got this matching die, which you could probably put in your starter kit. So here is just to show you some, some of the pieces in this. This is quite adorable. Ugh. And of course it's the power tape. This is a little frame. Let's see if I can get you in there. And so you can cut out a little frame. It's got little lines and a little detail in the corners and then flip it over and do the other side and you can kind of make it bigger or smaller. That looks like fun. And here's another one. Power tape. All right, I'm not gonna try to take them off. These are your little stars, so it'll cut out stars in your. Um, I'm sorry. Flowers, Fla uh, flowers. These are the stars over here. So this is the topper. It'll cut out your star and moon. We got some pine trees. We got a deer, and you know these match matches with the deer. And here's the flowers. Here's the flowers that this one cuts out. So really, really cool pre-order. So this, I'm gonna start working on some projects so that I can wow you guys all in uh, August. But, so this is real. If you join right now with the promo, you get, this is part of one of the pieces you get for free. So just to run, here is the Christmas in July. So with your starter kit, you get all these pieces and this stamp set. So that is really cool. So I wanted to show that off. Um, so let's go back here. So those are sort of the big promos that I haven't really mentioned before. Some. So here are our giveaways for today. So if you make a comment today on the live broadcast, um, you're going to get a set of clear faceted gems. So these are new in the new catalog. Lots of fun. The Watch Later is going to be the retired... You love you so. Ugh. I haven't had enough coffee. I've moved to water. <laughs> Ugh. Mm. I don't drink enough water. I gotta drink more water. So I'm trying to do that and I obviously need more coffee. So the Love You So host a set. 
And so if, to be eligible to win on this, you need to leave a comment and you can do that during the live broadcast, after the live broadcast on Facebook or on the YouTube. So on Facebook, the link will be um, above. Well, leave the comment below. Um, but if you're on and all the information that we do today with all the uh, PDF and whatever, that info is on above on Facebook, below on YouTube. But leave a comment, share the U Facebook or YouTube, if you forgot how to share the YouTube, share it and put a comment in shared with the D and you'll get a second entry. So you get one entry and you'll get a second one. So those are the giveaways for today. So let me see, I got my list. What do we do? Bump, 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 bump. Okay, so last week, oh, I had not this. What are we giving away? What am I giving away? So last week we, I didn't put it in my notes, people. Oh. Just when I think I am, here we go. So we are picking the winner of the Serene Silhouettes today. So let's do that. So we're going to go to here. We're going to random.org and let's come over here. We're going to make this bigger. So everybody, there we go. Everyone who left a comment on uh, last Friday's Coffee and Crafts is listed here. If they said they shared, it is, they got a second entry. And so if I zip by, maybe you'll see your name. And, ooh, Dawn is in there three times. So I got to take Donna out. Hold on. Can I delete that? Shouldn't be in there three times. Ah. Sorry, Donna. Um, so something on my duplicate. Oh, didn't work. There we go. Okay. So we are going to pick a winner. I'm going to hit randomize, and whoever pops up on top is going to be the winner. Ready? One, two, three, go. And our winner is Rose Marie. Congratulations, Rose Marie. So Rosemary, go to craftystampin.com, specials, giveaway, and there's a form there to fill out, and I'll mail it out. If you guys won on Wednesday, whoever won on Wednesday, I'm going to mail everything out today. So there is that. Congratulations to Rosemary. So now let's get to making our card. So, so we are going to make this utterly adorable little card with the um, a little wild stamp set. So this is the Little Wild stamp set and it comes with uh, Little Love's framelits. So they go together and they're kind of designed to be a tag, which is really quite cute. Um, but then it's really easy to cut them apart and make them their individual um, pieces. So where did I put art? So here is the PDF and this will be available. It's give me like an hour to get the post up. And this PDF will be there, it has all the cut sizes, it has a link to the post and a um, QR code, if you're that savvy, to get there. It has the link to where you can buy the products and it has lists of all the products you can buy and a space to make, make your notes. Um, so let's get started. So, doo -doo. all right, so I got my card base. And I'm going to grab my scoreboard and we're going to do this at five and a half. It's 11 by four and a quarter for the card base. I kind of favor that, oops, oops, banging stuff around. I kind of favor that size for a card lately. And so can't wait my order for the stamp set comes Tuesday. It is adorable. Oh, Sandy, you got yours. You're very welcome for your Wink of Stella. Um, so we'll set that aside. Um, and so let's start. All right, so I do have some tips and tricks here. So let me get a, I like to use a little scrap piece of paper under my card. So I'm the little bear and the little beehive. Um, I am coloring with the blender pen and I like to do that with uh, shimmery white paper. It, it's got a bit more, um, doesn't pill up quite as much as the whisper white does. So no, you're not late. No one's ever late. Hi Joyce. 
All right, so I'm gonna start with, and I got a, I got a trick here. So I didn't want um, the stamped images to be black. I sometimes can find that's kind of harsh. So I wanted to stamp it in espresso, and I was afraid when I watercolored it would be, um, it would bleed with the blender pen. So let me show you what I did to prevent that. So here's my blender pen. Fine. All right, so I got my two pieces. I, need... oh, I grabbed all the materials. I just didn't put them like in order. And there we go. So I'm gonna stamp in Versamark, then in Early Espresso. Oh, I gotta go clean them first. Hmm. Um, stamp Versamark, then Espresso, and then I'm going to heat emboss with clear embossing powder. So it will make it so that the um, the ink won't bleed. It's a little easier to watercolor, but I forgot to clean these. So we're going to clean these real super quick so that they, when I made this first card last night, um, so that I don't mark up my Versa mark. Okay. There we go. Oh, well. Oh, well. Okay. So here we go. Use my Versa mark. Um, okay, so let's start with the little B. So stamp, can you see me? All right, stamp in the Versamark, then I'm going to stamp in Espresso, and then, and then let's do a little bear. I'm going to stamp the bear, and I'm only really trying to stamp the bottom bear, and then, all right, there we go. And now I'm going to add the clear embossing powder. And so now when I use the blender pen, it will not bleed. So right now they're looking, not looking so crisp, but it'll crisp right up once we heat it. So let's move these aside so I don't get ink all over everything. Embossing helps you stay in the, it does help you stay in the lines. That little bit of a rim can really help look like a professional watercolor. All right, so let's turn my heat gun on down here. Does it mess up your ink pad? No, it does not. Your ink pad, your color ink pad will be just fine, having a little bit of Versamark on it. But you wanna make sure you clean it um, before you stamp it uh, from after doing the color, before you stamp it back in the ink pad. Uh, so that you, it doesn't make a big difference, but you get all the stamps then in your Versamark and you don't really want that. So let me, let's heat this up now. So this kind of lets you have basically every single color as embossing color. So it really uh, opens it up. And so I'm gonna turn it off. And I always like to check in the light, make sure all my edges are shiny. Oh, hold on. And they're not, so down by the bear's foot. There we go. So now we make sure he's all shiny. All right. So there's our bear. And let's move these out of the way. So let's watercolor our bear first. So I'm going to color him. So the first thing I want to color is the bee in the uh, that's buzzing right near the bear. And so I wanted to give the wings a little bit of color. And just so you know, if you don't know, if you squeeze our ink pads, you get ink in the cover and then you can use that to watercolor with. So I'm gonna use the blender pen, scribble on a uh, scrap paper to make sure it's clean. So instead of leaving the wings white, I wanted a little bit of color. So I'm using Smoky Slate um, and just adding a little bit of color to his wings. And then I'm just gonna rub my blender pen on my scrap paper until it comes clean. So then the bee is gonna be crushed curry. Give it a little squeeze. Your stamp, you like my stamp room? Thank you, I'm very, I know I'm very, very lucky. This used to be when we moved in, it's a little cape. And when we moved in, it had a, um, this was our bedroom. 
and then we did an addition when we had the kids added bedrooms upstairs. So this was the kids' playroom, and all they did was come in and take all the toys and throw them on the floor. So I kicked them out, <laughs> and it became mom's playroom. So, which works out great because I, I hold classes in here. It's my workspace. It's my uh, chick cave. <laughs> so now I want to color the bear, and I'm going to color him with crumb cake. And I squeeze, and I'm going to use the lightest amount of color. So I'm really kind of going along the edge here. And less is more in this situation um, and I can always come back and add more but it can be challenging to um, if you get a big mark with a lot of ink to come back and blend that out with this uh, with the blender pens and piece on there um, the shimmery white Kind of like, I, I keep starting when I put my pen down up at the line, the top or the side. So that's where I want it to be the darkest and then move in towards the center. And you can see I can go right over the face and it's not uh, smudging because of the, uh, the embossing. So there we go. And there we go. So again, always starting from the outside and kind of moving in. Um, there we go. So so now it's my play. Yes, it's my playroom. They, they, every once in a while, they're 10 and 12 now. So every once in a while, they come in and go, I miss this playroom. I'm like, yeah, huh. you have bedrooms. They now live on their devices and computers and such. Not a lot of uh, play, like when they were little and all the toys that went along with it. All right, so I think, I think he's good. I don't want him too, too overly colored. I think that, that looks good. So now we're going to do the beehive. So I'm going to do that with the crush curry. And again, what I want to do is start real light. And you can see on my finished, I really added a lot of dark right along here. So I'm going to start light. And I really just want to sort of color the whole beehive light yellow. And just to kind of get that base down, like I said, it's easier to add, go back and add more color than it is to really kind of move color away, remove it, move it around, um, and not have it look a little odd. So, all right, so now I'm going to come back, I'm going to grab more color, and I'm going to start at the edge and just sort of move in from the one side. And that kind of gives it a little bit more of a 3D effect. All right, and then to round the other side, I'm going to kind of turn it this way, and I'm really just going to add a little line along the edge. And there we go, to add to my color. Let's see, let's break this out a little bit. There we go. If you came back a week later, we'd be able to use what us on the inside of the lid. Yes, you can, because you close it up, and there it is. And it'll stay just like the ink pad. And the one really good thing about our ink pads, when you store them, they're designed for the ink pad, you can see this, so this is the top, the ink pad stores upside down, so the ink drains towards the top of the pad, um, so if, it's a great way, it, it, it'll stay moist, the ink on the top, sometimes 
I know people who will put a few drops of reinker in here to do that, to do the same watercolor, and then it stays nice in the in the pad. So, all right. So we're gonna we got a little more watercolor to do, but let's so let's come over here. Here's our card base again, and I need the yellow. I need you. I need you. I all these colors. Um. So. I wanted the beehive to not to like have a purpose, so I put them on a branch. So to find a branch, I had to go to Colorful Seasons, stamp set, and this branch. So, yeah. so I'm going to give this aside. So here is the top. Let me kind of turn it sideways. I want to take. Here's my DSP. I'm gonna lie it on top just so I have a eyeball as to where that's going to be. Ink up my, love my hair. Yeah, this is the, I'm having a, it's a humid day and I have naturally curly hair, which means it's a barometer for the weather. And today it's frizzy. <laughs> so it's up in a pigtail. So thank you. Alrighty. So now bees, where are my little bees? Buzz, 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 buzz. So I liked the idea of having a bunch of bees flying around the honey pot. So, oh, you know what I want to do? Let's, we're going to cut these out first because I want to cut it out and I want to set it there like I did with the, um, with the paper. So let's just move things out of the way. We're going to bring in our big shot. Can you see that? Yes. All right. So slide. I'm going to put this down. All right. So here's the die for the bear, and it comes as a double, like you're going to make a tag. That's okay. Put this down. I'm going to get a little bit of a uh, post it note. If you don't think your, oops, if you don't think your dies are going to stay where they are, my, this plate's starting to curl a little bit. So it doesn't hold real well to the magnetic platform as well as I would like. So I use a post-it to hold it. There we go. Love that Thank you. Blender pens, they're my favorite way to color, quite honestly. Um, I've started to use the auto painters a lot more, but I, I prefer the blender pens. I just... I think you get a better, better coverage or better, better control. Let's put it that way. Um, so we take these off, take these off, and pop these out. So there's my little guy. So let's see. Snips. I'm gonna take paper snips and just cut him out the rest of the way. There we go. And yeah. round it there. There you go. So there's our there's our two little two little watercolor images. Okay, so now come back here. And I'm gonna want to put him right there. So I'm gonna take my espresso again. I'm not going to emboss this one because I'm going to put the most minimal of ink on here. So let's see, I want oops, this here. Okay, and then all right, if it's here, I'm moving it out of the way so I don't stamp on it by mistake. Let's see. And then I just want it as a visual reference, so we'll fit it right in there. Perfect. Um, when I go to stamp, so that I remember where my plan is to put him. So now we're going to watercolor those guys. And good morning, everybody. Um, everyone news coming on. Um, here we go. So back to the smoky slate, and we're just going to color the wings. 
I'm really not even touching the edges where the ink is. Just to add a little, little squiggle of color. Go. Sometimes coloring doesn't have to be all perfect and to the lines and everything. And now I'm going to do the exact same thing with the fresh curry in the middle of the bees. And of course the bees have three, there's two lines in the middle of them. So instead of just coloring the whole bee, I'm trying to stay with not touch those lines, if that makes sense. There we go. All right. You can hear my kids fighting in the other room. Ah. Someone's touching something that someone doesn't want them to touch. Does it end? <laughs> All right. So there's our bees. I'm going to clean off my blender pen. All right. So there we go. And doo -doo 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 -doo. all right. So let me set these aside for a second. So now I want to cut back to my big shot. So I want to cut out, I'm using the largest scallop and the largest smooth circle from the layered uh, circles dies and I'm cutting a scalloped early espresso and a whisper white in the smooth. I'll run those through. Uh, don't hear them, don't hear them. That's good. I'm glad you don't hear them. <laughs> I think sometimes my son's goal in life is to just annoy his sister, but I think that's like a brotherly right, especially a younger one. Whoops! My guy just ended up in the in the trash bin. Ah! All right, dies. Okay, so I thought to ground my little bear that I'm going to stick on this circle. I would put a little um, grass, and that comes in the dye. So I'm just gonna do it three times, and I'm not purposely not gonna try and line them up. So I'm purposely doing one a little higher from the other. There we go. So it kind of gives him a spot in the middle. And where is he? So we're gonna attach him to this circle with dimensionals normal size dimensionals. Off they come. Here we go. I'm just going to stick him kind of like that. And of course, probably should have done this first. But now I'm going to attach the whisper white circle to the scallop circle. Blender pens are awesome, Kim. There we go. So now he's on the circle. So let's do, so now I'm going to use the wood textures paper. Love this paper. It looks great for pretty much anything. And I like to add a little bit of a border trim, even if it's dark. So I'm going to put it like here. So I'm just going to attach a, red, a line of snail here. and then line it up. And it's probably a 16th width. So you can kind of see it here. Now I'll put snail on the whole thing and attach it to my card. And as you can see, I will cut my DSP longer and then trim it to size. Um, of course, I didn't cut the espresso longer. So. So there we go. And I like to use longer scissors to do this instead of snips so you can kind of get most of it in one trimming, one cut. Just 
seems to be a little easier to, to do. So there is our DSP. Okay, so now I want to add him here, and I'm going to put him, this with dimensionals as well. Here, here, and here. Pull off the backing. Sometimes they are easier than others to come off. Um, if you have problems with your dimensionals, push in the middle, and they will come off. Uh, the, the paper will come off a little easier with your nail. So I'm going to attach and I want to hang the circle off the side just a bit and then I'm going to come along and do the same thing and cut off the edge. All right. So now I'm going to put my greeting and I chose a great big welcome for, for a sweet little someone. So, and I'm going to put that down here in the corner. And so I'm going to try and center it and keep it even. We'll see. That's a little crooked. That's fine. That's fine. So now the last thing to put is my beehive. But I kind of wanted the image like the bees are all buzzing around. So I grabbed my gold thread. I'm going to grab some, whoops, pulling out glue dots. Don't look at that. And so I'm going to grab some snail. I'm just going to put a bunch of snail on the back. And I'm going to take the thread and I'm going to wrap it around three fingers, three or four times. And then I'm going to take it, let's see, and I'm going to kind of twist it like an eight and stick it down behind and attach this end. There we go. So now you kind of got, if you can see it, the thread above and below. And I'm going to do the same thing again and go the other way. So wrap it around a couple times. Oops, two fingers. I want three. All right. And. Again, I want to twist and just sort of push it down into the, ta the tape and look at the end. Hold on. Come on. If the ends get too unruly, you can just kind of trim them off. So now I'm going to add a dimensional to the back of all of that mess because it looks like a mess on the back, but it doesn't look like a mess on the front. And I'm going to stick this right in the middle of all those bees. And there is our cute little bear card. So you can see the coloring a little better. I get too much glare off some of these, some of my lights. So that was it. So if you give me about an hour, um, I will get post up, have pictures. You can see someone sneaking in on the back behind me. I, I, I want to see what's going on. You want to see what's going on. Come show them your shirt. So this oh, is a, okay. this is, yeah, so here, this is my son and his level of humor. Is that you, bro? And it's a chicken with chicken nuggets. Uh, so give me an hour. We'll have the video up, PDF. Um, oh, I got to pick a live. I forgot. I knew there was someday I was going to forget. So let's pick live. Alrighty. Let me go over here first. I think I gotta log back in and refresh. And here we go. Do do do. Alright, so I'm gonna send you back over to my browser. And we're gonna come up here to pick a winner. And users can, oops, don't, users can enter by commenting. And so we are picking a winner for the clear faceted, where they go? Gems. Clear faceted gem. There we go. And users can enter only once. So ready? Everyone cross their fingers. Here we go. One, two, three. Pick a winner. Boom, boom, boom. And our winner is Sandy. 
Congratulations, Sandy. I think you won with me before. I think you won just like last week. Yay, Sandy. Congrats. So, Sandy, you know what to do now. So, here it's the clear faceted. Thank you, everybody. Love the shirt. See, they like your shirt. Um, uh, countdown till back to school. So, thank you for joining me. I will be back on Wednesday, July 12th, 11 a.m. again, and we will do this all over again. Maybe he'll be at camp. <laughs> so, oh, uh, where are we? Okay. Goodbye. Thank you.